Hello there viewers, and today we've got a very special surprise for you. I am going to be let's playing on my Wii. I've finally got a capture device. So, first game of all options has got to be F-Zero GX. Now, I know Nintendo has a horrible policy to people playing their games, but if anything, I feel like this is kind of sticking it in their eye because they have, since they produced this game, F-Zero GX, said that they're not going to make another one, principally because they have, quote-unquote, no new ideas. Or, to put it another way, they cannot surpass the game they themselves published. Or, Sega actually produced and they published. In other words, Sega made a better game in their If anything, playing this game over and over and never letting go is a bit of a spit in the eye of the old Nintendo, at least until they reform their YouTuber policies whereby if anyone reviews even any of their content in which they then make money from selling advertising, Nintendo will claim Angry Joe having that problem. But today we are going to play probably one of Sega's greats. I'm going to start on standard class I think, and on the first cup. Granted I've unlocked more stuff that is for later on, but I'm not going to erase my card just for the sake of demonstrating a first run. Because let's face it, I've been playing this game an awful lot, and this will not be a first run regardless of whatever I do. So this isn't a terribly difficult track, and with regards to that I'm going to be playing with near a max speed. You get tighter turning if you go closer to the acceleration but then you get a lower top speed and you've got to really balance it off with a boost so if any of you want to play along those are things you have to take in mind I'm not as I'm not playing Blue Falcon as Blue Falcon because really I'm not all that good right, let's hope this is recording at 60 FPS like it should be now if you can kill five enemies in one run you get an extra life that is actually really useful because the chances of you making it a full run at once without losing any lives are quite slim, certainly if you're pushing to get first place all the time. The other thing to remember is that that guy is a dick. His car basically is massive, is hard to move around, and he will end up getting all the boosts, and he does seem to have pretty much infinite boost. He is, I suppose, the Captain Falcon's rival, so knock him out as fast as you can if you can. Right now there are two types of turning. Luckily for Mute City we, it doesn't really matter what we use. You can It's pretty much a straight line the first track. But you do need to know both so I'm gonna tell you about both. The first is where you just use one air brake on one side. It slows you down but then at the same time it does give you more drag on that side which is what you're looking for. So that would be that kind of turn. Oh. It does, however, slow you down. The other thing, of course, is a drift turn, which you get by pushing both buttons at the same time, which is almost like yaw in an aircraft. It'll let you slide sideways rather than leaning in a t into a turn. It's more like um, power sliding around the turn. So you're going to need that, not this race, but the next one. There we go, first place, 180. You'll notice that the bots are suspiciously close to each other and to me. There was a reason for that. This game cheats. This game cheats like a bitch. And that is not a glitch. That is a feature. They wanted to make this game as hard as they could. And at the time, well, this was GameCube game. They really did not have a lot of hardware to work with. So instead, they used some kind of cheaty hacks in order to make the game harder. So for example, enemies will have unlimited boost regardless of the state of their armor. Or the fact that they will always be literally on your tail regardless of how much of a record lap you're setting. So here we go. Casinopolis. Again, don't forget that you can take out your rival. Usually it's best to take them out on the line because when you get going, certainly if you've got a max speed car with lower acceleration, you don't want to be wasting time targeting your enemies. But like I said, if you can get five hits in a single race you get an extra life. So for the um, expert and probably master cups, oh come on. I hate the way he calls you, well he says retired in such a way that it sounds like he's com commenting something else. Let's put it that way. 
Oh well, it gives us another chance to take our little friend here out. If your car's not heavy enough, you're not going to kill anything. The lighter cars have more speed, but less momentum. And this game does actually seem to model momentum in that actually usable way. As in, you'll swing further out on turns. Whether that's useful or not, it means that drift turning is better in heavier cars. But on the other hand, snaking's harder. So, you, it's really up to you what you choose to do. How you choose to play this. I usually play as Captain Falcon because I've had so much practice with this car. Either that or Queen Meteor because she's got a sort of even balance of weight but she's got really strong boost which means it lasts a long time it would seem or at least it gives you a high rate of speed yeah I'm not even gonna mess around here let's just boost to the end this is the first cup it's pr practically a straight run but if you are gonna be Queen Meteor or you're gonna pick pick something that you like don't pick it just because it looks pretty I have done that enough times in the past and lost because of it. You are not going to want to have to play this game as many times as I have play it, played it to learn as little as I have actually learned about it. The other thing of course to remember is you don't actually need to win every single round just in order to win the cup. Because there's five races and they all award up to 100 points each, if you get first place in a couple, you can be in a position where you don't actually have to win. You don't even have to finish above 30th. As in, if I'm 100 points ahead and the most they can get is 100 points, if I finish 30th, I still get enough points to win. Which I think is silly, but fun. Sand ocean. Oh. At least it's not surface slide. Surface slide is tricky to say the least. It's probably the track I crash on the most. However, that is in the Diamond Cup, and you only unlock that by completing, I believe it's the expert mode of all of the other cups. Or at least that's what I have unlocked, so it, that would be my presumption. Now, the problem with this track, of course. Oh, Queen Meteor's my rival. Not surprisingly, because she's maneuverable and fast. Now that corner there was probably better off done with a drift turn. Because of the weight of my vehicle. But that doesn't mean that I actually considered it in the moment when I had to. Just can't stop looking at me like that. The people on the internet do not want to know that you're hungry. I will sort you out in a minute. Well, they, they know now. That's, that's it. You've gone, you've gone and told the entire internet that you're hungry. Are you happy? No, I, I will sort you out in a minute, Jesus. Sorry, folks. Technical glitch there. As I'll call him. So that's some that's sort of a compromised turn between a drift and an air brake turn. Now it's a good idea not to use air brakes in either in drift or or in a slide turn if you can avoid it because air brakes slow you down. On the other hand, if you get as low down the energy meter as I've just got, you don't want to touch anything anywhere. It's very possible a single hit could take me out here, so let's um, air on the side of caution. Ooh, and it didn't, but it was close. So let's boost through the pack and try and get back to the front. I always find that the last mile is probably the best place to boost to the front. Whether or not it is or not, I don't know. Ooh, very low on energy. Remember, don't crash a lot or else you will lose the race. What is it they say? To finish first, first you have to finish. Well, that wasn't a spectacular win. I do believe we can use a life to retry it, but I don't... No, actually, no, we can't. We'd have to crash in order to cause that. Never mind. We're still top of the rankings because of how far ahead we came. And luckily, unlike the Mario Kart levels, there's no such thing as a three-star win where you didn't touch the sides or get hit by anyone else's shots. I never quite understood that. 
There's also no such thing as a boost start because that would be cheating of some kind. Ooh, yes. OSC Sync Carnival. OSC Sync Carnival is the music here. Brilliant. Probably the most pumped music that I think is in an F-Zero game. Or in any game. And now, the difficulty here is fighting your way through the pack without being destroyed before reaching the end. Once we get boost, we've got a significant advantage in that we can actually control our steering compared to those sort of zany bots that decide they do want to fight with each other. If you can deliberately decide you're not going to attack them because you're not going to get those five kills, you can sometimes avoid... You can take the, the closest line to the edges and you can avoid some of the tussles and they will actually slow each other up by fighting. There we go, so boost power, boost through the pack. The difficulty is maintaining that lead. Now this is gonna need a drift turn here. Trying to get the drift turn to maintain constantly while being attacked is tricky. I, I tend to find that going the boost route is the fastest route overall though. Wow, they really don't want to give it up. Well, neither do we. Right, now we can't really afford to touch the sides yet. We need to hit that boost plate, or the regen plate before we do. Well, we're out in front. That's a start now, isn't it? Try not to hit the side here. It's much easier when you don't have people shoving their crafts in your face. Now we can boost through these easily enough. The difficulty is make sure, making sure you take the cleanest lines around the corners of course. And it sounds like that shouldn't even be something that's that important. But it does seem to be. There we go, first place. Top six. Well, yes, I did see that. We got first place. And as you can see, they're as close as ever. We're up to 358 points now. That's a fairly stellar lead. We don't actually need to win this last one by any measure to win the ch championship. Aeropolis Multiplex. This is one of the really fun tracks because of how much floating back in the air there is. As ever, careful. Right, a boost straight into a jump means that you can use airtime. Now, assuming you've got a um, fairly aerodynamic craft, I believe that matters, you should be able to get well ahead of the pack. The other thing, that's a drift turn if ever I saw one. You just need to drift for tightness. Oi, oi. Now, if you can get to all the boost plates, you will set yourself ahead of everyone else. The way I tend to use drift is to begin with an air brake turn, and if I'm not turning tight enough, lean on the drift. Lean on the other pad because it increases turning your turn into a drift. For example, this one over here is going to need to be a drift because it's the only way we'll get around it at all. Same for this one here. Now, I think it's more important to hit this regeneration plate than it is to hit that booster. But don't forget, when you're in the air, if you boost, you're going to come down a little bit sharper than you thought you would. Made that mistake a few times. And don't forget, you're metering how much of your energy you can boost with before you hit the next boost plate. And how much of that boost plate, or regen plate, I should say, you will actually manage to cover. If you don't manage to cover enough of it, you won't regen enough energy and you might as well not have done it. Another thing to remember, the AI is programmed to cheat if you hit the wall. So if you touch the wall, they are going to suddenly make that boosting noise and come up past you. It's a weird way to play the game, but it's what they did. You know, I'm not going to defend it as saying it's a good idea. They did hack this together quite readily 
and I would love Nintendo to actually give the franchise to Sega again and say, go on, you did it once, do it again. I really doubt they will. Don't forget, outside is the tightest line because you need as much space as you can. That's probably Black Bull because he's an arse and is always encroaching on your territory. Again, just making sure we use up as much of our energy bar as we can because we're not getting into any tussles so there's really no point having it left for defence. Obviously the wide line is the easier line to take for speed. Not necessarily the easiest to steer. And that's the end of that chapter. And my legs fall on asleep. Well, I'd say that was a fairly good victory. Black Falcon wins the day, 2 minutes 40 on that last lap. 458 points, not the best you can get, you can get 500, but you don't get more tickets or anything for doing that, so there's not a lot of point. This is the victory lap. I hope you'll forgive me if I skip this every other time after this, because literally it just shows the top three craft and then lists absolutely every stat you can possibly imagine. Not really that interesting. You don't get points for watching it, so I'm just going to continue past it. Now the next bit is frankly the weirdest addition I've ever seen to any racing game. F-Zero TV. TV announcer is going to interview us for some reason, or our driver at least. F-Zero GP venue. We're broadcasting an interview with the Grand Prix champion. Okay then. I'd like to ask you something. What are we going to ask him? Well, we've asked him all the questions, so let's just ask what him the first one. Your victory. You don't win by being lucky. You win by being bold. Yep, that Thanks is a uh, very anime that convention. That's it, everyone. Way Thanks. of behaving. And then you win, and then you unlock some tickets or parts if you haven't completed it before. And that's the end of one cup. Now, I've got to say, that was fun, but there should really be an online option here, say in V's Battle, that had a 30-person online mode. I'm not quite sure why Nintendo wouldn't take the opportunity to do that, because that seems like something that would make them oodles of money. Like I've said in my other video, of course, Nintendo clearly hate money because they have so many franchises they just neglect. When other franchises get remakes over and over and over. I'll take a remake for this game, Jesus. Fucking hell. Sorry. I, I apologise for my language, but I am quite excited for this game and irritated that they wouldn't continue a franchise that lasted three generations, sold tons, and has produced probably the best racing game on any console. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you had, you can click the like or dislike button to so let me know what you think. You can leave a comment or tweet at Iatzine. And don't forget, if you want to see more videos in the future, to subscribe.